Flying flowers, living life in separate stages, butterflies and moths have captured our imagination. They inspire art and populate world literature, from the caterpillar of Alice in Wonderland to the winged flower fairies of 19th century illustrators. But butterflies and many moths are far more than a pretty pair of wings. What may dazzle the human eye is actually their way of communicating with the world around them. Whether their colors are designed to attract a mate, alarm a predator, or perform a disappearing act, butterflies and moths look the way they do for a very good reason, survival. At every stage of their four-step life cycle, from egg, to caterpillar, to pupa, to adult, they are equipped with a spectrum of strategies that make them beguiling survivors. Butterflies and moths are masters of display and deception. In ancient Greek, the word psyche means both soul and butterfly. The Greeks believed that the human soul transformed into a butterfly while searching for its next reincarnation. Even today, as a symbol of the soul taking flight, butterflies are sometimes carved on tombstones. Butterflies and moths belong to one of the largest groups of insects. Their family name, Lepidoptera, comes from the Greek word lepis, meaning scale, and pteron, meaning wing. Unique among insects, their wings and bodies are covered with tiny scales. Magnified 100 times, these are much like shingles on a multicolored roof. It is these scales which add up to such spectacular mosaics of color and motion. Like a bird's feathers, the scales trap the air, empowering the butterfly with flight. Like all insects, butterflies and moths have a simple body made up of a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. Remarkable for their range of color, they also vary greatly in size, from a butterfly with a wingspan the size of a thumbnail to the giant atlas moth, as big as a dinner plate. The evolutionary curtain first opened on the moths during the age of the dinosaurs. The oldest fossilized moth is 180 million years old. Butterflies evolved 100 million years later, with the flowering plants on which they depend. This butterfly fossil is 40 million years old. Scale-winged insects quickly spread throughout the world. Today, from the Arctic to the equatorial rainforests, our world is home to 15,000 species of butterflies and 10 times that many kinds of moths. It is the butterfly's power of metamorphosis, the ability to transform itself within its chrysalis from earthbound creature to winged beauty that has always enchanted humans. Christianity associates the butterfly bursting from its chrysalis with the resurrection of Christ. Ancient Egyptians believed their gods were endowed with metamorphosis, escaping death by changing from one form to another. Within this egg, smaller than a grain of rice, a new butterfly forms. The rib shell contains the genetic blueprint for a majestic hero able to fly halfway around the world, the monarch. Butterflies and moths lay their eggs in ways to guarantee the greatest chance of survival. Some seek safety in numbers by laying in large batches. Others lay their eggs in a random pattern so that some will be overlooked by predatory bugs. Although eggs may vary in shape and structure, all have a shell tough enough to protect against parasites yet at the same time allowing them to breathe and retain water. Mm -hmm. 
Butterflies lay on a host plant which their caterpillars will feed on. A heliconid first inspects the plant for other eggs. A crowded plant means less food for her offspring. But the passion vine has developed its own deterrent. To discourage butterflies from laying, it produces false eggs, yellow spots mimicking heliconid eggs. Although butterflies try to lay their eggs as discreetly as possible, when it comes to courtship, they're some of the world's most colorful exhibitionists. Using a combination of both sight and smell, when male meets female in the butterfly world, an aerial tango is often the prelude to mating. Some males will even mate with the female as she emerges from her chrysalis. For most moths courting by moonlight, it's not color that attracts a mate, it's cologne. The female emits pheromones, chemicals which attract males. The male Hercules moth, able to smell a female three miles away, can literally smell its mate across a crowded forest. But moths don't have noses. Their fern-like antennae are covered with small sensors. The antennae of most butterflies are straight with club-like ends. Antenna shape is one of the ways you can tell the difference between a moth and a butterfly. Most butterflies fly during the day. Most moths fly at night. Most butterflies are brightly colored. Most moths are dull. Most butterflies hold their wings upright at rest. Most moths lay them flat. But there are exceptions. There are brightly colored day-flying moths, dull butterflies. Truth is, there's not one single characteristic that separates butterflies from moths. Our monarch egg is now ready to hatch, six days after being laid. With sharp mouth parts, the baby monarch caterpillar cuts its way out of the shell. Its first meal is the shell itself, an appetizer for the royal eating binge to come. Given their voracious appetites, caterpillars are not exactly popular with gardeners and farmers. An army of caterpillars on the march and in a feeding frenzy can destroy crops and cause famine. It's not just crops they eat. The caterpillars of the clothes moth have a taste for wool. The tapestry moth shows little respect for history. But caterpillars don't always get a free lunch. Being low on the food chain means lots of creatures are ready to munch on them. Even humans find them appetizing. In China, silkworm caterpillars are a delicacy. Bogong moths and Wichita grubs are eaten by Australian aborigines. They're both nutritious and low in cholesterol. Given the belief that a butterfly was a disembodied soul, in England it was once believed that a woman who ate a butterfly would soon be with child. Without a doubt, everyone has had butterflies in their stomach.
At birth, our monarch caterpillar is no bigger than a pin, but after two weeks of gorging, it balloons to the size of a finger. Home is the milkweed, a poisonous plant on which it feeds, making the monarch caterpillar toxic. Its brightly colored body advertises its poisonous nature to passing predators. A caterpillar's favorite diet is a vertical salad bar, where it eats about one leaf a day. If that seems unimpressive, for a man to match a caterpillar's voracious appetite, he would have to eat a 40-pound salad daily. A caterpillar is a hungry beast. Its mission is simple, to eat and grow as quickly as possible. It can double its body weight in 24 hours. To eat like a caterpillar, a person would have to eat another mountain of salad. At first glance, caterpillars seem to be nothing but slow-moving feeding tubes, easy pickings for a hungry predator. Because of their vulnerability, they've evolved a variety of clever defenses. Many caterpillars are covered with sharp hair spikes, a protective armor which deters predators. Some of these spikes, such as those of the garden tiger moth, are tipped with poison, like the poison arrows associated with some human tribes. Brightly colored caterpillars are advertising their toxic natures. The yellow caterpillar of the death's head hawk moth proves the adage, you are what you eat. Dining on deadly nightshade makes it poisonous to all predators. Some caterpillars spray noxious fumes when disturbed. Some just pretend to be fierce by rearing up like a snake and pulling a frightening face. The pine processionary moth caterpillar seeks safety in numbers. They march out together to feed, following one another in military-style columns. Their barracks are tough communal cocoons high up in the pine trees. Swallowtail caterpillars do a good impression of bird droppings. Not an appetizing sight. The trick is not to move. But the most common caterpillar defense is not being seen at all. Many caterpillars are designed to blend in with their surroundings. The caterpillar of the large blue gets ants to protect it by pretending to be an ant larva. The ants take it into their nest, where the caterpillar eats the real larvae while bribing the adult ants with sugar from a gland on its back. Perhaps the best caterpillar trick is that of the Central American moth, which burrows into bean-like seeds. When exposed to the sun, the caterpillar jumps to get out of the heat. The result is what's commonly known as a Mexican jumping bean. New England folklore holds that the severity of winter can be predicted by the ratio of dark to light hair on a woolly bear caterpillar. The darker the coat, the harder the winter. Like all caterpillars, the monarch must shed its skin to grow. They molt about four times, discarding their old skin for the more elastic, larger skin underneath. Fully grown and ready for its next transformation, a caterpillar begins weaving a protective cocoon of silk produced by a special gland near its mouth. The silkworm caterpillar can produce one continuous strand of silk. 
The longest on record is two and a half miles, nearly twice as long as the Golden Gate Bridge. Silk production continues to this day. The first silk garments were made by the Chinese around 2500 BC. Silk remains a prized material for the finest gowns and luxurious bed sheets. A bed of silk is what all caterpillars destined to become moths use to build their cocoons. The oak silk moth weaves a blend of silk and oak leaves for its cocoon. The bagworm caterpillar prefers to recycle the wool from sweaters and weave itself a caterpillar sleeping bag, which doubles as a camouflage suit during the pupil stage. In the era BS, before sweaters, bagworms employed the same strategy in birds' nests. Building a cocoon from the surrounding materials, they could go undercover and pupate right under their enemy's beak. But it is only the caterpillars of moths that make silk cocoons. Caterpillars destined to become butterflies grow a hard shell called a chrysalis. Hormones dictate its every move as our monic caterpillar wiggles out of its skin and the new chrysalis skin begins to harden. In its final form, the chrysalis looks like a bud. During this vulnerable pupil stage, some butterflies camouflage themselves against a hostile world. The great Mormon even has a choice of chrysalis colors, brown or green, depending on the color of the surrounding leaves. Meanwhile, inside the monarch chrysalis, an extraordinary transformation is taking place. Metamorphosis is nearly complete. The pupil shell has become translucent, and the wings of the butterfly are just visible. All caterpillars contain a genetic program to change them from feeding tube to winged beauty. Depending on the species, this can take from a few days to months. Despite their fragile appearance, many moths and butterflies are powerful flyers. In the 1920s, the British aircraft maker Geoffrey de Havilland named a range of biplanes after them. The most successful was the Tiger Moth. Different butterflies have different flying techniques. From the lazy beat of the tropical blue morpho, which almost glides through the rainforest, to the busy flitter of the Heliconia butterflies. Poisonous butterflies fly more slowly. They have little to fear from predators. Some species of hawk moth beat their wings so fast they can hover like hummingbirds while feeding. It is often said that we are drawn to some irresistible force like moths to a flame. But why are night flying moths so helplessly drawn towards the light? Scientists are still unsure. Some believe it has to do with their confusing the light for the moon, which is believed to be their navigational beacon. True or false, it is often their downfall. The delicate butterfly needs to protect itself from the elements. When it rains, they use a leaf as an umbrella. 
During the cooler nights, they roost in the foliage. Many butterflies hibernate during the winter. The small tortoise shell and the peacock, common European butterflies, hibernate in houses or outbuildings. In Germany, butterflies in the house were once considered ill omens. On St. Peter's Day, February 22nd, children would knock on the houses with hammers and recite rhymes to drive the butterflies out. If they failed, misfortune would surely follow, such as outbreaks of cattle disease. The superstition has some truth in it, as butterflies can spread disease via contact with the eye fluids of cattle. When caterpillars graduate from feet to wings, they also change their diet from leaves to liquids. Most butterflies drink nectar from flowers by using their long tongue-like proboscis. Some feed on fruit. In their search for water and minerals, butterflies will feed on human sweat, turtle tears, even the dung of other animals. However, some moths don't eat at all. They don't even have mouth parts. As caterpillars, they store up all the energy they'll ever need. But many day-flying moths do feed. The Darwin's hawk moth holds the record for the longest proboscis. It stretches the length of a drinking straw. Feeding on honey, the death's head hawk moth uses its proboscis to pierce the wax walls of a beehive. Its sinister name comes from the skull-like markings on its back. But the moth most deserving of horror film status is the vampire moth. It pierces the soft tissue around animals' eyes and drinks their blood. According to legend, when the Bishop of Winchester dined with King Arthur, the king endowed him with magical powers. From then on, if the bishop wanted to emphasize the truth of his words, he opened his hands and released a butterfly. He became known as the Bishop of Butterfly. Besides providing them with flight, the wings of butterflies and moths also provide them with their best defenses. Like the caterpillars they once were, some butterflies want to be seen. Yellow, red, orange, and black are the colors that read poison to predators. To fool predators, some non-poisonous butterflies have adapted the colors of poisonous ones. The monarch butterfly was named in honor of King William, the Prince of Orange. The Viceroy got its name meaning in place of the king because it pretended to be a monarch. Mimicking other undesirable species, some butterflies and moths have developed the striped bodies of bees and wasps. On first glance, a predator might confuse this butterfly with the animal it mimics and pass it up for a less menacing meal. Eye spots serve a dual purpose. When a bird attacks, it often goes for the eyes first. So eye spots help divert the bird's attack. A butterfly can afford to lose part of its wing, but losing its head is not an option. The most common trick employed by these magicians of the air might be called Gone with the Wing. The story of butterfly and moth camouflage is as varied as the backgrounds they blend into. Brimstones are perfectly designed to disappear on ivy. Indian leaf butterflies become invisible on dead foliage in the rainforests of Southeast Asia. The peppered moth takes the prize for adaptability. 
While the country-dwelling peppered moth has remained white, the peppered moth of the city has darkened to match the soot and grime. For all butterflies and moths, it's adapt or die. After an 18-day pupation, the moment finally comes. Our monarch butterfly emerges from its chrysalis and completes its journey to adulthood. Hanging upside down, it uses gravity to help push blood through the veins and the wings, forcing them to expand and dry. As the wings open, so does the most extraordinary chapter of its life. The monarch breaks free from its terrestrial roots and takes to the air. Its wings are truly built for long distance flight. Every year, millions of monarchs migrate between Central and North America, an amazing 2,000 miles, the longest migration of any insect. Some monarchs catch winds that carry them even farther across the Atlantic to Europe. Monarchs always spend the winter in the same valleys of Mexico, where one tree can be home to 20,000 butterflies. Awoken from hibernation by the warming sun, the butterflies start to feed and drink in readiness for their epic journey north. Some individuals will make it as far as Canada, others will die on the way. It will be their offspring who finish the journey. From the tropics to the tundra, our world is home to thousands of species of moths and butterflies. As long as they unfold their wings, they will continue to beguile and adorn the natural world. Eyewitness Museum, created by combining traditional filmmaking techniques with state-of-the-art graphics. Stripping away the mysteries of nature and science to reveal the essence of each subject. Bringing the world into sharp focus. The making of Eyewitness. The distinct style of the eyewitness books is the basis for each of the programs. Each half-hour episode is based on a book title. The eyewitness book's visual style gives the program makers a starting point and a challenge. The challenge of transferring clarity and super-realism into moving images and sound. Now let's take a look behind the scenes at the making of Butterfly and Moth. Eyewitness is based on a best-selling series of books, The Eyewitness Guides, renowned for their graphic innovation and super clarity. Our filmmakers were inspired to continue this tradition with intense close-ups, capturing the wonders of nature. But escaping the world of print, the Eyewitness Museum is never silent. It's alive with music. For Eyewitness, the composer created the entire soundtrack on his computer. All the sounds are stored on hard disk. Once the notes are entered through the keyboard,
the composer can choose any instrument he likes to play them back. The sounds weave in and out of one another, as if a whole orchestra were encased within the desktop. Once the musician is happy with the composition, it's off to the dubbing theatre, where the music, voiceover, sound effects and pictures are finally brought together. But music is not just limited to the sound studio. When our Chinese dragon came to the eyewitness studio, they brought their percussion with them. So you're holding it up, in, and turn, okay? And just try and hit that mark again as well. For the crew, it was a rare opportunity to sit back and enjoy the show. You really need to almost pan in on them as well okay. to get it smack in the center. Okay. Good. Cut. But despite okay. their energetic performance, in the final program, their moment of glory passed in no more than the blinking of an eye. Behind the graceful dance of an invisible lady lies a less dignified truth. To concentrate on the silk dress, everything had to be blue, including the dancer. It's not easy to get things right when your head is wrapped in blue cloth. When slowed down in post-production, the final effect is magical. <laughs>